So which is a sector in your view will see maximum action and why? See broadly, I mean, let me just step back several steps. I think you will see infrastructure which will start coming into its own. It has to. Yes. Uh, technology oriented industries will come in and to the extent that fintech is part of that, yes it will benefit. But it's also got the overlay of uh, unpredictable regulation. Mm. So I think that sector will do well. Mm. Uh, healthcare of course, uh, because I think you know given the large population and the focus on healthcare, we, there is a almost an infinite demand mm. and we are a country of shortages. Mm. So whatever you say, whether it's education, whether it's healthcare, there is always shortages. So uh, logically speaking, you know, demand should not really be an issue for most industries. Uh, once we get over the sort of current cycle of disruption, mm -hmm. uh, I think we will see a lot more activity coming back. Are you seeing more fund-based action or more strategics could be interested? You did say that some domestic deals will happen. So which are the sectors that could be more prone to domestic deals according to you? See, uh, as I said in my initial comments, I think a lot of the activities that we've seen last year at least has been driven on the sell side by stressed asset type of factors. Mm. Uh, on the buy side, it has been consolidation related uh, you know, factors which are driving this. Uh, there's, a, there's a shelf life to how much that will work because there's only that much you can consolidate mm. uh, in many of these industries. So now it's a time for foreign capital really to come in and uh, be a major part of on the buy side. So we have seen some new funds uh, entering India and some of them are looking very aggressive, made be Fairfax, Brookfield, CPPIB or CDPQ. Yeah. Do you see this particular area developing more more foreign investors in your uh, conversations with the clients? Are you hearing that more such funds could be entering India in 2017? That's it. But this is really financial capital. Hmm. Uh, strategics, as I said, are a bit cautious at this point of time. Hmm. But still India remains one of the top opportunities in the world. Hmm. So more funds could be expected and any particular geography from which, because we've seen Canada infusing a lot of funds. Are yes. you seeing that? Uh, Japan has also I turned the positive. Middle East sovereign funds also. Hmm. And what's your view on Japan? Uh, Japan has been steady for a while. I think they have, um, since the last five or six years, we've seen a steady flow of activity from Japan. They need to diversify and I think it will continue to be a big uh, investor in India. When you talk about the strategics and uh, the foreign strategics being cautious about India, uh, do you cautious also... Cautious not from the point of view of seeing the opportunity, I think they all do. Mm -hmm. They are still uh, uncertain about how they will actually get a deal done in India. It's more about ease of doing business, rule of law, conflict resolution, mm -hmm. governance. I think those sort of issues are factors which trouble a lot of people in their investment committees before they finally take the decision. There is no question about the fact that India is one of the biggest opportunities in the world. Nobody denies that. Hmm. So the go governance debate is what I was coming to yes. and that is uh, one thing that is bothering now a lot of uh, larger clientele yes. who could be entering India in the present circumstances. Yes. So uh, I think let's elevate the governance conversation into a broader space of uh, public governance, governance in the private sector and also governance in uh, promoter families. I think all these three debates are very live. Mm -hmm. So there's one observation that I would have on 2015-16 but particularly 16 mm -hmm. and it's work in progress which will flow over into 2017 is almost like a governance 2.0 discussion. Uh, the level of maturity around the deeper issues, uh, the conversation and debates are at a different level. I think India is moving to a very different uh, governance consciousness, if I can call it that. And it's not about technicalities about this rule or that rule. I think it's a concern about stakeholder interests, fairness, uh, governance institutions being conscious of public opinion about how you know they are perceived, fairness. So you know these are. Uh, they're not just big words. I think we can see them in action uh, in our uh, various clients. And at all these three, uh, in all these three sort of pockets, we're seeing a lot of discussion around that. And it's all about again creating sustainable businesses with longevity. Hmm. So, do you think that Indian uh, corporate houses are really coming around to the expectations of foreign investors now? Not yet there. Uh, but this is probably one of the, this and general concerns about rule of law in India 
uh, are probably the biggest worries on the foreign investor side. But they're getting more and more comfortable. Now, when they again, for instance, do a China comparison, we, we look a lot better. But when uh, investors compare themselves, compare this market with, with some of the Western economies, then you know we're somewhere in the middle. Okay, so this can be a huge dampener for us if, if they are not convinced at this point. But how's the deal pipeline looking at this point, Mr. Shroff? I think good, definitely. Uh, it's still linked with the stressed assets theme, mm. uh, and there are a large number of accounts that need to be resolved mm. in the coming year. They will drive MA activity. So I think the new bankruptcy code will provide some tailwinds for that. Mm. So I, I can, my instinct is that in 2017 we'll see some really large transactions, almost of the same magnitude mm. that we saw in 16. So as early as 2017, you think that bankruptcy law will start showing results? Do you think its implementation is as easy, especially with infrastructure not really being ready at this point? Uh, I don't know. I think it's too early to judge. But if things are moving really fast over there, by the time it shows uh, real effect under the Bankruptcy Act, I think it will take longer. Hmm. But just the fact that it's on the horizon and the fact that bad things can happen to you if you know you don't pay your dues, that is driving a lot of voluntary uh, M&A activity with, as I call it, the stressed asset consideration on the sell side. But the promoters also have a right to appeal. How many do you think would land up as court cases? See, a lot of the big deals that you've seen have been friendly, so there's no question of uh, contest or uh, appeal from that. Once things are in the bankruptcy court's resolution system, uh, there will be some amount of, uh, firstly there will be a new jurisprudence that needs to be developed. Yeah. There are grey areas which will need to be resolved. But that's fine, I think there's a learning experience that the system will go through. Hmm. Um, out of every 10 cases there will be a few that will get contested and a few that will be successful. Hmm. Direction of travel is very good. Hmm. So do you think that for deal makers like yourself, uh, this particular space is going to be very remunerative in the next year? I don't know about remunerative but busy for sure. <laughs> That's the difference yeah. <laughs> because it can just go on and on for a long time. Yeah. That's why I asked complex you also. Yes, and there are many things uh, that still are not clear in that particular Absolutely, but that's space. because it's new. Hmm. And every time there's a new, new market changing event, there is some amount of learning before you find a new normal and before a, what I would call a market practice emerges.